second day on the water turn into a rescue mission just off the coast of California. Here's an aerial view of that rescue. Two women were kayaking when they got stranded by some rocks on Anacapa Island. Luckily, they were able to call for help and the Coast Guard came to their rescue. A rescue swimmer lowered down to the beach. Each woman uh, was brought up on board that helicopter. Both are safe and both are doing fine right now. To mark five months since the death of Breonna Taylor, radio stations across the country will pause their broadcast at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. A Louisville, Kentucky station coordinated this, and it will feature one of Taylor's favorite songs. There will also be a tribute to other female victims of police violence. At least 50 stations are expected to take part. Taylor, who was 26, was shot to death when officers entered her apartment while serving a no-knock warrant. No charges have been filed. A kindergarten teacher from Texas had no idea her recent Facebook post about going back to school would spread the way it did. It's been shared more than 40,000 times on Facebook. Jason Britch shows us why it's captured so much attention. Kindergarten teacher at Sundown Lane Elementary, Dana Kimmel, had no idea a recent Facebook post would spread the way it did. I had no clue. I figured it would impact, you know, a few people in our area. I had no clue it would impact so many. <laughs> the post now has over 40,000 shares on Facebook. Kimmel says she was inspired to make the now viral post in response to another post that she saw on Facebook. It just was not um, positive and it wasn't necessarily what's going to be happening in my classroom or what I want in my son's classroom. And so I saw a lot of parents concerned about it and um, just kind of a lot of unrest happening. And so I wanted to put my take out there. Some of what's included in the post. I just started out with dear kindergarten parent. Um, and then we kind of go through what our day might be like in the beginning. You can hug whoever drops you off and, um, and we are going to comfort you. And this is my cool face shield. And you know, maybe I feel like an astronaut and maybe you feel like an astronaut. We get to go to recess and we get to go to PE and um, all of those things. And then I just kind of ended with every single year we prepare for your kid. And the single most important takeaway that Kimmel wants people that read her post to have is. Just have a positive mindset for parents, for teachers, for kids. We're going to have some things that we don't love. So change that mindset and get ready to have a positive year. Because if you go in positive, then you will just take all of those changes in stride. Definitely have to have a positive outlook, that's for sure. We'd like to bring in Jason from Amarillo, Texas. Hey, Jason, thanks for joining us. Who knew something so simple yet comforting to parents would get this much attention? In her case, maybe just being up front really helped ease some concerns that a lot of parents have. Yeah, and this teacher, her name is Dana Kimmel. She's a, a kindergarten teacher over there at Sundown Lane. And when you, if you would meet her in person, you would realize why this post took off the way it did. She just, she oozes positivity and just a positive mindset and that's that's the main message that she really wanted to get out to everyone and as you saw on Facebook the word spread uh, and the post spread pretty quickly it really did you know I took a look at the post if we can pull it up here it's a really long one if you scroll down it's filled with a lot of emojis but also she she has a little fun with it what's so interesting is you know we're in this time now where no one's really been through this um, yeah kids don't really know what school's going to be like neither as neither do parents but she really does ease their concerns kind of walking them through what a day would be like what kind of reaction has she gotten uh she did say she's gotten a little bit of a little bit of both more like about you know with the whole debate i mean that's going on nationwide with the face shields and the face masks and the effectiveness of them but overall i think she she was telling me that overall it's just been overwhelmingly positive because parents teachers and students this is something brand new for all of them. So mm -hmm. if it's something that's brand new for them and it's unknown, why not go into it with a positive message? And that's really what she wanted to do. And, and you mentioned it right there. Talking to, and with that Facebook post, talking like she would talk to kids. Yes. She said, I think things really helped it out as well. Just what kids can kind of anticipate to kind of put their parents' of mind, uh, parents of minds uh, at ease as well. I think it just shows what parents really wanted to hear. And it's very telling yeah. with how many shares it's gotten. Thanks so much for joining us and bringing us that story to us from Texas. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.
Businesses, they're trying to bring fall to us early, you guys. Duncan is rolling out with pumpkin flavored coffee, espresso, and baked treats. I see you, Steve. Yeah, yeah you're nodding your head back there. I I'm excited about this. Oh, yeah. Guess what? You can get this next week. Doesn't that look delicious or what? This yeah. is the earliest Duncan has rolled out its fall flavored goodies. Ooh. We're not sure what they're going to do about Christmas, but. Hey, they might roll out with some stuff early too. All right, if you've been to the store, I'm sure you've noticed Halloween candy is already in the aisle. I think decorations and costumes as well, but we do know Hershey already has its products out now in some stores. This is earlier than usual. Candy makers have feared the pandemic might negatively affect sales because this is typically their biggest season for sales, as you can imagine. I mean, Halloween, right? But not all stores are on board right now. Target, Walmart, even Walgreens in particular said they're going to hold off on the Halloween candy. They're just going to wait until early fall, so no rush. Well, if you haven't seen this story, you need to make time for this nine year old boy because he is making waves on social media right now. His brother was recently adopted and he told people he just hopes he'll soon find his own loving family here soon. Here's Lacey Lett with his emotional story that's tugging the hearts of many. Jordan strapped on some rollerblades and it didn't take long for him to show us some impressive skills. Afterwards, Jordan was thrilled to meet some of his heroes officers with the Oklahoma City Police Department. What's that? He's always been inspired by police officers. What do you want to do? Please. Why do you want to be a police officer? Because they're fun and also they protect people. If Jordan looks familiar to you, it's because we featured him and his brother Brazen three years ago at Frontier City. Back then, the siblings lived in separate foster homes. We would like to do anything, like bake and karate. Brazen has since been adopted, and Jordan says he doesn't get to see his little brother that much anymore. Now, this nine-year-old just hopes he'll soon find his own loving family. If you could go anywhere, anywhere in the whole wide world, where would it be? To an adoption party for a home. And if you were granted three wishes? Family, family, those are only wishes I have. It's no secret a family would be a dream come true. Jordan lives at a group home now, but would love a sense of normalcy and the unconditional love of a parent. I call mom and dad, or this mom, or this dad. I don't really care. A family to eat mac and cheese together, ride bikes together, and most of all. Well, the reason why it's important is because um, so I could have um, some, like, some people to talk to anytime I need to. A child just looking for his place to call home. Lacey Lett, Oklahoma's News 4. Oh my gosh, where are the tissues? Lacey, uh, joining us from Oklahoma City. Wow, this this child's story. I mean, um, you know, he's looking for a family. His brother just adopted, and he's just so positive. Tell me what it was like just talking to him and just the, the kind of boy that he is. So this is our my second time to meet him. I met him a few years ago, and just to kind of see him grow up uh, was pretty amazing. You know, he's nine years old now. The first time I met him, he was six. He likes everything that a typical kid does. So I know he likes Minecraft, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and mac and cheese. Very sweet. The one thing that really stood out to me, though, was, and, and, and surprisingly so, was how much he wanted to talk about being adopted. I mean, it was really all he could think about and talk about. You ask him a simple question question like where in the world would you want to go and he says an adoption party yeah and ask him that he, ask him his wishes and it's just a family yeah. like i want parents a, a mom even or just a dad like it, it doesn't matter i would love to be in a home i, I want to hear about like the because your story has gone viral um has anybody expressed interest yet like what have you heard of it? i know it's recent but um any updates on a possible family ready to take jordan in well, I will say, um, even to our newsroom, we've had uh, more than uh, hundreds, I would say, of emails, phone calls, people reaching out on Facebook. And DHS, I did talk to them. They've already received 5,681 submissions online. That's not their phone line. So that means there are always, uh, there's a lot of interest. Of course, this does not happen overnight. This takes months and months. It's, it's an adoption process for a reason. So I'm hopeful that a, one of these families is the perfect fit for Jordan because he definitely deserves it. 5,681 submissions. 
so far that, that is, is only since last night that is amazing so uh, yeah you said this is a process so they're gonna have to go through all that and um just really excited for jordan because i think he'll find his family soon anything else that people need to know before we uh, head on, move on to our next story um, I would just like to tell people that, you know, this is a process and if you are interested, it is a worthy effort for sure to get that process started in your home state. That's where you got to start and, and just remember it takes months to kind of get that down the line, but mm -hmm. um, definitely a worthy effort. So try it out. Well, thanks for bringing that sweet story to us, Lacey. We appreciate it. Real quick, are you, uh, are you left-handed, right-handed? I'm a lefty. No way. You're a lefty. I use my right mind. Guess what yeah, today is. National Left-Handed Day? Yes, it is. Happy National Left-Handers Day. You're one of the 10%. Can you believe that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Go out and celebrate. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, if you're just like Lacey, this day is for you because this Thursday we are celebrating all of our left-handers out there for, oh, it's International Left-Handers Day. We're going across the world here. Scientists believe hand preference actually begins to develop before you're born. Again, only 10% of the population is left-handed. Several famous people are in that small percentage, including presidents George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and Barack Obama. Historians say Ronald Reagan was also left-handed, but he was forced to switch as a child. And I probably should make this uh, shout out before my producer gets upset with me, but he is also left-handed too. So happy National Left-Handers Day to Matt and all of you who are left-handed. I'm right-handed, but it's all good. That's gonna do it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you back here for Newsfeed now tomorrow tomorrow.